what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to do a quick demo of two uh, items, two, two projects first, so that you know what I'm actually uh, showing. This is basically a, a gesture sensing board. This is uh, actually designed by Pao Si and we made it as a DIY PCB board, meaning that we did not send it to JLPCB. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so what it does is that this is, you can see the new pixels there and uh, let's hope this works. So if you actually, you see if my hand goes down, it follows going down. If my hand goes up, it follows going up, it goes to the left, it goes to the right. Okay, uh, that is what it does. I'll go into uh, explain a little bit more about why we call it DIY PCB to the extreme in a while. The other uh, the other project is this uh, Iron Man T-shirt. Okay, it's a little bit off. So if you guys can uh, just scan that QR code and go to that website. Uh, just a few of you would do. Can somebody help me hold this up? Are you contagious? <laughs> I'm joking. I am contagious. Okay, so, um, okay, I see some of you have actually clicked it already. So, what it does is that it's actually a, it's an IoT art reactor. <coughs> Okay, so if you have seen it, what you should get is this in the face over there. Okay, everyone just don't have anything there. Okay, so this is a little bit... Okay, so stop. Okay, stop. Nobody can. Okay, so what happens is that. Uh, okay, so anyway, you guys can see what's happening that all your phones are actually changing. Yeah. Right? Uh, without. Uh, somebody tap and all, all your phones changes. Yeah. Right? So only one person can tap at, at one time. So this is a little bit different from the regular IoT projects that you see. It's not a kind of like a, a, a request and response kind of IoT project. This actually pushes into your phone. So if you don't touch your phone, you can see that it's actually showing what's on the screen there. Right, okay, so you guys can uh, play a bit later. I'm just going to pull this off now. So then. Okay, um, Okay. so now we'll just, um, I'll just go proper into my presentation. So how it works is that there's actually a custom-made DIY PCB board at the bottom. As you can see, uh, it's made into the shape of the, of the, uh, the print above, right, so that it will actually form inside the triangle line that you see there. And this connects basically to a node MCU, which is uh, the ESP8266. Uh. Okay. And then uh, how it works is a little bit different. There's two servers, there's not one. There's one Apache server, and this server gives you the web, the web page that you all have seen. But once you all load the web page, what it does is that it, loads, it connects to a node Node.js server and this is running sockets IO. So when you do sockets, right, that is how it's able to push into your phone without you touching the phone. So the minute you press, right, it goes to the socket uh, server and this pushes into every device that is connected to that server, including the, the Node MCU. So this is the first time that I actually managed to, uh, I was playing with uh, sockets uh, inside uh, Node MCU. Okay, that is. Um, that's basically how it works. Then uh, very quickly, we got like 15 minutes and five minutes is for pauses, so I have to go quite fast here. Uh, so DIY PCB boards, you can see all the boards that is made here, right? These are made uh, purely uh, in my house, in my office. And I've been doing this for a very, very long time. I think some of you are so sick of me actually giving this presentation, right? How many of you never heard this presentation before? <laughs> oh shit, oh shit. Okay. So uh, very quickly, this is how it works. Okay, so you so you start with a uh, blank PCB and you use what you call a uh, toner key transfer media, and you actually uh, use this little key press, and you actually transfer the image uh, onto the PCB board. So the whole thing is copper, right? And then when you actually peel this off. 
you can see that you print this on. Okay. So uh, the trick is to use transfer media paper, which is what I sell. Okay. <laughs> like I said, disclaimer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And then uh, the etching solution is a homemade etching solution, things that you buy in the supermarket and in the pharmacy. Vinegar, you buy in a Sing Siong. Hydrogen peroxide, you buy in any uh, pharmacy. And salt, you buy in the supermarket. Okay. Uh, so how it works is that the exposed copper, this part here, which has nothing printed on it, once the chemical touches it, all of this will get etched away. Every part that is printed, like all the black lines is protected and it will not it will stay there it will not get etched away okay, so it's a very simple it's a very simple process okay, and what you need to do is you will need some sort of an etching machine so if you leave it there what happens is that the copper uh, stays on top it's, it's, it reacts with the chemical but it forms a, it forms a residue and it stays on top of the copper so you need something that actually shakes it so that the, the, top, uh, the copper that's actually etched away will be uh, will be thrown into the solution and then so that the new layer of copper below will be able to uh, get exposed to the chemical. Okay, so how many of you have ever made PCB before? Stand out to... Okay. So why we say DIY PCB to the extreme? This board here, this is the 80 Mega 32U4, this is a QFM board. Not, uh, it's, so I always get this, I always, whenever I show this, I've shown this for like four years already and uh, Every time everybody asks me the same question, how small can you go? <laughs> okay, so this is like, so I one day I just went to Pao Si and like, hey, we try and make a QFM board. Do you think we can make it? Then he was like, yeah, we can try for Maker Fair. So, yeah, apparently it's not that difficult to actually make this uh, QFM board. Uh, we did it on the first try. Yeah, it's, this is the first try. And sold it one time. I'm not joking. It just worked the first time round. So I etched a second board there, which is uh, nothing soldered, so that you can see uh, how it looks like without the components. And uh, yeah, I will show you. Okay, so this is how it starts. Right, you print this on the blank copper board. We etched it, and after etching it, you can see all of these all come out. So that is the QFN chip after it's been etched, but the toner still on top. Then after that, you clean away the toner, and you will see that the QFN chip is five millimeter. Okay, this is five millimeter. I have some. Uh, yeah, this is a much closer one, and uh, then. So this is under a microscope, nice. and this will be a micro USB connector, wow. and uh, yeah, zero point five mm drill hole size. You would probably be interested in this video. Yeah, so this is how uh, how it was actually soldered on. Hot air, we flow. So you got this the first time? Yes. And our uh, boss is the one who did it. I, I do not take any credit for the soldering, okay? <laughs> uh, that's why Bao has has to come up here for and take half the glory as well. <laughs> So that's Bowser's hand. I'm the video cameraman. Yeah. So we only had, I think, the first round we had the pins like shift to one side, which was the wrong one, and we had to push it uh, one step to the left. And yeah, that was about it. Uh, it also has this. Um, you see that what? Where can you see it in here? But what it does is it actually jumps into into position. Uh, Video is quite long. Uh, so there is also another. There is the gesture. No, I don't have a picture of it. I do have a picture of it. 
Yeah, so that is the gesture control sensor. The solar, the legs are actually at the bottom. So the actual the actual footprint is actually only six squares and the solder is like the bottom. You can see that you cannot see actually any solder coming up on the side. Yeah, so I think I'll pass it down to Pao Su now and he will explain a bit more about how what this bot how he made the bot and everything. And of course after that you guys can uh, take a look at this. You guys can uh, PCB, we want it to be a single layer PCB because we do not want to go double layer and have to do registration, all this uh, stuff. We want to do a single layer, we want to use QFM pass and we want to do something like a real demo that's an interactive demo. So the design is actually, we toy around several ideas like using an IMU or using or what kind of uh, sensor to make it interactive and uh, it finally we try to make it as a gesture. Because with gesture, we can have the board fixed somewhere and let people move. Instead of using an MU, then we, we want people to shake the board, all kind of things. And then in the demo, in a maker fair, everything will happen. So, so we choose gesture. So basically, it's very simple. It is like 80MHz32U4, which is the uh, same microcontroller used on Arduino Leonardo. Uh, we use this one because we, we can save one USB interface chip. And uh, WS2812 is the new official. And also, this is a new sensor we found that's quite interesting. It's an APDS 19960. Uh, I talk a little bit about this a little while later. So, to go to the next page. So, the design of a single layer PCB actually has a bit challenging for. SND parts because previously I, when I was very young and doing DIY PCB, I used paint to draw onto a copper clad ball, all kind of things happen. But those are for true hole parts. And we know that, for example, a true hole resistor uh, gets two, part, two pins, and the two pins is like 11 or 12 millimeter gap, and you can run multiple traces in between. However, however if you are using a SMD part, then you are no longer be able to run any wire in between two pins. So, so when you design this kind of board, it's suddenly you feel like you are missing one dimension. <laughs> but it actually takes quite a while to design this board. But the, the focus is to put everything on a single layer, where at the back, back side there's only several jumper wires that make it then can have the full connection. So this is the way you are passing around. This is the fully etched PCB. Um, Leo already saw, showed the the end result is uh, passing around. So a little bit more about the way you see, we saw the video when we are using hot air, we use some solar paste to solder this one. And what, uh, the one problem is that it jumps, although the surface, uh, the surface tension is actually put the part into center, but actually it jumped one position away. So we, we did several, like we spent like a half an hour just to solder this chip, but it is actually, uh, it's done within one try, within one ball, I would say. Uh, and after hot air treatment, then we just, I just use some of the solder and touch up the edges. And so this is easier, but the other one, the gesture sensor, it, sensor, it does not have exposed pad on the surrounding. So everything has to be done in one part, and just hot air and push it down, that's it. So a little bit uh, 
information about the gesture sensor. Yes, if you ask me how does it work, actually I don't know. Uh, it's just a uh, magic. <laughs> but, uh, what I can dig from internet is, is actually this picture. It's, it's kind of their marketing material. What happens is, uh, and, and this side is the block diagram which is in the data sheet. What happens is the sensor has two parts. One is an IR LED here. It blasts the infrared out. Then there's a four photodiodes inside, and they, they did some configuration like up, down, left, right, and uh, by measuring the reflection go into these photodiodes and uh, by measuring the time they know where, how you move. Uh, by the way, this sensor actually has, can do much more. It can be used to detect color. It has a red, green, blue photodiodes uh, as well, and, and can detect ambient light. So actually it does a lot of things and we see the demo just now, it actually works okay, but sometimes it really, um, how to say, it's, it's not so sensitive and especially if you are, sit, you are standing in front of the sensor then you have a background reflection already, then you add down your gesture, it's not so well uh, recognized, but it has a very, very long data sheet that you can read and really dig into the registers, but I'm, use, I'm just using an a existing library which is made by SparkFun and it just works like that. <laughs> so uh, this uh, video I already saw. So okay, I need to put into a little bit of uh, correction about one, one of the presentations I made last year, also during the Maker Faire. That, uh, I'm talking. We, we, we did the new pixel war, whereby the new pixels are driven by a five volt power brick, and the the, the controller is a no MCU, which is three point three volt. I made a disclaimer that although your new pixel can be driven by five volt, you can still using a three point three volt I/O to drive the new pixel. Uh, this is uh, fake news. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this time, what we found is. It's almost the same thing because the, the, this sensor is using 3.3 volt I/O, so I forced my microcontroller to be speaking at, uh, to run it at a 3.3 volt, and the new pixel are running at 5 volt. And when I doing the same thing again, I found it works, but it's very unstable. Sometimes the picture gets distorted. Sometimes the color changes, and uh, we did some tests and found when I power this whole thing using a battery, it actually works but I using USB 5.0, it doesn't work. So then I start to um, guess that it's actually the, the, the I.O. level causing problem because most of the time, when you talk about a logical high level, it is about 70% of the supply voltage. 5 volts, 70% is 3.5, a little bit higher than 3.3. So not so nice. And in the end, I just working a diode and <laughs> drop it. Drop at 0 0.7 volt and everything works. And the where you can see the board, there's a there's a box there, there, there. That's the only mistake we made the whole for the whole project. But now it works. So yeah, that's about everything I want to say. It works. Uh, the the problem is only when you supp your supply voltage is five volts and your I O is at three point three. There are some of the instab instability problem. It is it works, but sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it works. Uh, the specification is say five volt. <laughs> That's a problem. So uh, actually, I did some of testing. I lower the voltage of uh, new pixels. It actually works until like two points on both. But at this kind of voltage, the color actually uh, is not very nice. It, it kind of, the green color is very bright, but all other colors fade a lot. Feel free to ask more questions because we're still setting up here. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, uh, announcements as well. If anyone has any announcements, 